There was a guy who was on this podcast, you know, John Bernthal. He was talking about this guy that uh, he interviewed. He was going to blow up a mosque. Assalamu alaikum, greens of peace. This is the D show. Do I love you, man. I love all the work that you're doing. When I was ready to talk about it, I would only talk to you. Yes. I was explaining how much respect I have for the faith the of Islam. Dean show. Welcome to the D show. The D show. Now, recently, some of you shared with me some clips with our old friend, Joe Rogan. Whoa. And, uh, some of the most disciplined people that I know are very religious. It's really fascinating, particularly fighters. Where he's praising the Muslim lifestyle. Like a lot of the uh, Islamic fighters out of Dagestan, they're uh, some of the most dominant fighters and some of the most religious fighters, so devout, and because they don't have the distractions that a lot of the hedonists do. He talks about them not partying, drinking, and all the other debauchery that goes into that dark black hole of following your lusts and desires. And because they don't have the distractions that a lot of the hedonists do. Yeah. You know, they're not party like the guys out of Khabib Nurmagomedov's camp or some of the most dominant fighters. They're, they wear their hair all exactly the same way. And these are men. It's not that like they don't like women, but they just have wives and they can have up to four. They practice all, the, all they care about is like family, religion, training. They, they, mm -hmm. they don't chase girls. They don't drink. They're just they're, they're they're just training constantly so they're not out there committing adultery fornication porn screwing around they practice all, the, all they care about is like family religion training they they, mm -hmm. they don't chase girls they don't drink they're just they're, they're they're just training constantly like insanely dedicated to their craft and they're the most dominant they are committed to their family respect of the parents love proper upbringing of the children so they can be good human beings and their religion is the way of jesus if you didn't know it's that pure monotheism stick with this for a second the way of life of moses of abraham of jesus and the last and final messenger the Prophet muhammad peace and blessing be upon him of the worship of the one and only creator of the heavens and earth but not his creation and being morally upright and he praises this lifestyle the lifestyle of being humble like habib he talks about he has millions but he's driving a toyota truck Khabib is very wealthy yeah. and he drives a Toyota truck. I mean, he's, uh, he lives in the same house. I mean, it's like he's very devout in his beliefs. And if I understood him correctly, he's talking about Habib, how he totally left the game. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. And now he just got out. I think he's uh, decided to retire completely from mixed martial arts coaching and everything. Very religious. Now, that's not what I want to focus on. I want to bring your attention to what you guys brought my attention to with these clips where you shared an interview that he did with a John Berthnall, this famous actor, where they talk about a American military Marine. I've had him on a program. His name is Richard McKinney. Let's look at this clip where John Berthnall is narrating the story to Joe Rogan. Now, please excuse the musical instruments. I just wanted you guys to see this video so we can comment on it. Richard McKinney, he was Marine, he was Force Recon, and he was overseas during 9-11. I believe he got injured and then he came home, he's from Muncie, Indiana. He just had this like unbelievable hatred of Muslims. At the same time, the Muslim community in Muncie was growing. There was this wonderful woman who created something called the uh, Muncie Islamic Center. She brought in over 157 Muslim refugees into America. He was seeing more and more Muslims in the community and was driving him crazy. He was gonna go blow up this Islamic Center. He built a bomb, walked into the center. When he walked in there, he was met by that woman, Bibi. She greeted him in this way that he had never seen before. She invited him, she gave him a Quran. He really wanted to read it. He thought that he was gonna find proof in this Quran that, that all these people just wanted, you know, Americans dead. So he decided to leave that day and come back still with this plan to blow up the Islamic Center on a Friday where there would be 200 people there. Then the woman invited him into her home and, and cooked for him. Now, years later, he's a devout Muslim. He's the president Whoa. of that Islamic Center. Whoa! And, uh, they are like family, and I had both of them on the on the podcast. Very amazing story, isn't it? And then Joe Rogan goes on to narrate this same story to one of his other guests. Take a look. There was a guy who was on this podcast. You know, John Bernthal. He was talking about this guy that uh, he interviewed. He was going to blow up a mosque. He had this hate of Muslims after coming back from overseas from serving, and he was going to blow up a mosque. And he went in there, and he met this woman who welcomed him into the mosque, and he was still totally intent on blowing her up, blowing everybody up. She invited him over her home for dinner. He was still intent on it. So he gets to know her and his family, completely changes course, becomes a devout Muslim. Wow! And then talked about the whole experience. So we commend you, Joe. I think Joe's come a long way, step by step. I think in the past, he's had some guests who has, have affected him in a negative way, some pseudo-intellectuals who 
really knew nothing properly about Islam, who are not proper, properly educated, and we've had to call these things out. We've had people such as Muhammad Hijab and Ma Mustafa and others to come on and to look at some of these things that have been said. You can watch some of those programs in the past. So just we keep it fair and balanced. So the things that he's done in the past, we call that out. Now we want to be fair and balanced. He's speaking, highly praising the Muslim lifestyle, which is connected to Islam. So we want to commend him for that. Keep moving forward. And God will, inshallah, he can have just like one of his best friends, Lex Freedom. He had a imam on his program and he can go and bring someone on and go more in depth with some of these stereotypes that people have regarding Islam. Now, for those of you who want to hear more about this amazing story that Joe Rogan was talking about and John Berthnall, who I, I'd like to have. If you guys can go ahead and get this message to him, I'd like to have the invitation is still open to Joe Rogan to have him on the program. We'd love to have you on. And John Berthnall, I'd love to have you on to talk about this interview that you did with our brother Richard McKinney. And for those who want to hear more of this story in full, I'm going to leave you with a clip with this amazing story of our brother, American military Marine Richard McKinney. And that's the program I did. It's the Dean Show 746. Just go on my channel there, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and look for the show number 746. And you can see the full interview that I did with Richard McKinney. This story that Joe Rogan, famous actor John Berthnall, were talking about. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next time here in the Dean Show. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And they said, why do you want to go back to Iraq? I said, I'm not done killing Muslims. Storm. Two tours Turkish in Islam? Somalia, Bosnia, uh, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, I wouldn't have been called a terrorist, which is what I would have been. Yeah. Because I'm white. Because I don't have religious affiliation as far as Islam. Now, if I would have been a Muslim and did something like that to a supermarket. We know how that goes. That's yeah. Story, that story is easily predictable. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so, but she goes, what do you mean? I said, they're all Muslim. Like it didn't matter. They're the other. Yeah, they're the other. Because she knows I hate Muslims. Yeah. I'm reading the Quran. What is going on? And right, she. The famous saying that's usually always said by a bigot is that I don't want my family around those people. Yeah. I would be and considered a criminal. I knew that. But I saw it as doing one last thing for my country. And I knew I would end up in federal prison. I knew I would end up with a needle in my arm. I knew that. And that's the way I felt. If I got rid of this hatred, I would die because it's the only thing keeping me alive. Yeah, so yeah, literally this and, was, yeah. And I was like, bam, I want to see what the guys say about this. So then they explained it. And it was a, a, an historical passage that was, presented. I decided without telling anybody, I'm going to go visit these people. Mm. I'm going to give them a chance to prove me wrong. God. I mean, I was raised with, uh, Christian values, I yeah. guess you'd say. My, my 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 mom was fairly religious in in, in Christianity. So you would have been at that point in my life, at least. America was my religion. Eight weeks later, from the first day I stepped foot in that in that Islamic center, I took my shahada. I cannot leave without giving you a gift. If you're not yet Muslim and you tune in to see what these Muslims are talking about, and you like a free copy of the Quran, go and visit thedeanshow.com. We'll take care of the postage and everything and get it delivered to you. And if you still have some questions about Islam, call us at 1-800-662-4752. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And if you like this episode of The Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, <laughs> 
بالحب اجتمعنا وربنا يحييكم بالحب اجتمعنا وربنا يحييكم مرحبا ويا هلا فيكم انتم منا واحنا فيكم بالمحبه نحييكم يا هلا ويا هلا يا هلا ويا هلا ويا هلا ويا هلا amount of uh, Muslims around here it's it's pretty huge and uh, like the, this the, the place the location that you opened in basically it's far it's further south from the other the other big massage and everyone I know a lot of people that I, I used to I come my, my cousin lives nine minutes from here another uh, uncle my, of mine lives about five to ten minutes from here this area and the masjid alhamdulillah opened up in an area that it's much needed and this size yani this yani the center this center is much needed for this area and the idea of this center is needed for the whole state because we don't have anything like that in the whole state the da'wah center where it's going to basically nurture and basically educate and it's going to basically spread islam <laughs> حن قلبي على